How's it going, everybody? Welcome to The Secret History, Living in Your Aquarium. So, I wanted to give you guys an update on my lovely Hillstream tank, Gobi setup. Uh, right now, we have a filter. This is a 20 long, and we have a filter that's set up to handle a 40-gallon uh, tank, as well as an extra air stone, and as well as some directional power heads that just are keeping the general flow in the tank moving, uh, and then it's bouncing off uh, the far side of the tank and coming down. Now, I did turn it down for this just to show you guys these beautiful little uh, gobies that I got from Aquatic Arts. So, in here, we've got three species. Uh, I'm going to attempt to not startle them because they're all out right now, and uh, this is kind of a, a rare moment, an exciting moment. And right here, we have a female. So the females are less colorful, and you're going to be seeing three species. So this looks to be the Palauan uh, goby right here that we're looking at. And here is the uh, cobalt blue female goby that just swam towards the back. So the female gobies in these species all have a line that is dominant, that runs down the length of their body. Now, we also have the neon blue gobies uh, as well as the neon gold gobies. So they are both really similar, and they live... This guy's a neon go gold male, and you can see he's got that beautiful gold... Um, dorsal fin they have two dorsal fins which is uh, kind of a unique evolutionary trait uh it's it's very cool uh i must say and then we also have here that so looking at her closely here is the palauan riffle goby and uh we've got the female up there and another larger female it looks to be it could be a young male who's not showing the color yet on his uh, dorsal uh, fin. When they're a little young, they don't show, uh, and so you, you don't quite see it. But on the cobalt blue species or the neon blue species, uh, the females have a kind of turquoise color next to their head uh, and blue uh, sheen to their coat. Now up here, we've got the gold species. Um, or actually, this is, sorry, this is the neon blue goby. So these neon blue gobies have, you can see, a turquoise to blue color line running all up and down their body. And this is a male where he's got the checkerboards or diamond markings farther down his body and then uh, the yellow or bronze colored fins. Now, these color up brighter as they get excited and into what they're doing, but what they're doing most of the day is, well, besides hiding and kind of darting around, they swim in this very uh, endearing manner. And what they do is they kind of swim around and they look for uh, material to eat. So this is a neon blue um, I, and like I said, he, if it was the neon gold species, which do have, uh, territories that overlap somewhat, uh, you would see gold, uh, scales in, in the main body, but instead we see this turquoise and blue pattern running down the length of the body. And, uh, the female for the neon gold and neon blue, this gal right here, is, is very similar um, and you can see that blue, so we know that it's a blue, uh, a neon blue. And now they're together. So you can see the, ma the male is smaller. And uh, you can see they kind of have a little snake head that can pivot on its own. And it's got a nice turquoise color. Their eyes are actually uh, independent as well and are able to rotate like a chameleon's, which is really cool. And back here you can see there's an actual gold... Uh, there's a gold uh, goby back there, and then there's also a uh, another blue one. So there are about 30 species in the goby family. Let's just talk about them in general. Uh, they eat uh, very peacefully. You know, they will eat little creatures, maybe baby shrimp and uh, fry or eggs, if it's literally right in front of their face and they're kind of hiding out in a spot where they're trying to avoid uh, 
the the current. They like to pick an area where the current is a little weaker. And even though they have the ability to literally climb straight up a glass wall or a rock face, uh, they tend to find an area that's just out of the current and they'll hide like behind a rock or a piece of wood uh, or even just a notch on that rock or wood and then they'll eat biofilm. And so when I say they eat biofilm, it's very similar to these baby plecos that are in with them. They're eating everything from algae to mold to little microscopic organisms that form aufuchs. And aufuchs are a subject that I have an entire video on. If you're curious about them, you can look that up on my channel. But in this video, I just wanted to kind of show you how they're doing settling in and they're starting to fully uh, color up. When we see the gold males come out, they're really quite impressive, the, the, the mature ones. And there's one that is kind of the dominant one. So they are a social fish. And another really fascinating thing about them before we get into the care of them, because as much as they're an awesome nano fish um, that's just really fun to, to watch and to take care of, um, they do have special requirements. So the special requirements that they definitely have uh, are that they need enough biofilm that they can graze continuously all day, all day and even into the night. They need to be able to munch on surfaces that have uh, a well-established uh, tank's worth of algae mold. Now, they're not going to eat algae like an algae eater or an autosynclus. They're really, what they're doing is they're trying to eat the um, the little spirulina and the um, plankton and and uh, stuff like that off of these surfaces. So here is a Palauan riffle goby. They also have kind of an interesting little mohawk on their back too. And uh, you can see, well, he's just going to the bathroom, but you can see that it's green. It's a green algae-like uh, stuff that he's excreting when he goes to the bathroom, whereas uh, it would be a darker color. Uh, if you look at plecos, they have like a dark brown color waste when they use the restroom, <laughs> when they use the restroom, when they, when they knock on the door and ask to use the restroom. But uh, they need water that is turning over at least 10 times, if not 15 or 20 times an hour. And then they also like to be, so that's pardon it, but you see the uh, algae that's starting to grow on the glass. I have actually encouraged that. I've had this light at a wavelength that encourages algae growth, and I've had it going uh, so that these guys have food. I've had it uh, planned for over a month now that I wanted to get these guys set up. Now, the other fish in here are kind of incidental. They're, uh, they're in here just... Uh, for the fun of it, also just because they help keep the uh, the natural uh, biology of this whole ecosystem stable. They produce waste and also uh, biofilms on their own bodies that allow the uh, gobies to then uh, feed off of you know the tank in general. So you have to remember that a fish a fish is coated in a living. Uh, even like this guppy here, which the guppy needs to move because even though he was raised in my water, which is very neutral to slightly acidic, uh, they like harder water, so he'll be moving. But these little, um, these little uh, phoenix rasboras, which I also got from Aquatic Arts, they're going to be the tank mates as well as these, um, uh, these beautiful Som Fong rasboras. There are some uh, rasboras or boraras, some fongsi, and you can see the males have an orange color on them and the females have a green color and are kind of wider at the belly, but they are both beautiful little fish, the phoenix rasboras and the some fong rasboras. They like water uh, that's also similar to Southeast Asian river water. They like tannins because these gobies are found in, and what you want to emulate in your tanks, uh, they're found in conditions uh, of chains of islands. So places like Iwo Jima, uh, places like Palau, Fiji, Hawaii, 
um, you know, you think of an island paradise in the Pacific, and that's where you're going to find these amazing little creatures. And they evolved from saltwater critters, and then they have moved. There's a female uh, Palawan riffle goby right next to the male. And they evolved so that they could take advantage of that freshwater environment that almost no freshwater fish exist in yet. And, you know, it takes eons for that to happen. So in these coral-formed islands or lava-formed islands, you can actually uh, oftentimes find a specific species that only occurs on that island. And so there are saltwater gobies and gudgeons and other little fish, but these guys have all turned into freshwater species. And so as an adult, they live in the freshwater, whereas uh, uh, they hatch their young during uh, the rainy season generally. And that makes it so that then the, the larva or the eggs, as soon as they hatch, get washed out and they go out to the salt water and they're going to get... Um, basically live out there in the open water and in the reefs where they have more cover and where there's a lot more food like plankton biomass wise so they bulk up out there and then they come back to a river or stream in the fresh water as soon as they start undergoing the metamorphosis back towards puberty uh fish puberty <laughs> so uh it's an interesting life cycle very hard to replicate in captivity and, uh, oh, by the way, here's another one of the green shrimp that I also got from Aquatic Arts. And if you guys are interested, uh, you can get any of these fish that you're seeing here and a lot of the plants, the catapa leaves, all this stuff, you can get at Aquatic Arts. There's a link below, 15% off discount. And they have, I mean, I've got four species. Oh, here we go. Here's the main male. So this is kind of uh, exciting that he's out. Um... The main male of the uh, neon gold gobies is swimming around. He's got a male blue goby swimming with him too. Um, but I don't know if you guys caught that. He really has a beautiful gold uh, mane or, or dorsal. It's really just a fin. But the double dorsal is very unusual in the freshwater fish world, and so it stands out as an interesting thing. Now, you can see, if you watch them eat, if you've been watching, uh, they, they're eating, they're taking the algae, and they're stripping it of all those little particles. So they do inadvertently rip off algae and eat some of it, but that's not what their main diet is. It's the stuff on the algae, if that makes sense, and the little colonies of bacteria and biofilm protein that they eat. Now, you can try to transfer them onto uh, spirulina or, um, you know, other types of food like uh, veget vegetative matter and things like that. Sometimes you can get them to eat a little bit of, uh, of you know, brine shrimp or something little, um, uh, like like I said, hatch baby brine shrimp, maybe a Daphnia here and there. They will go for that sometimes, but their reluctance to do so actually makes them an incredibly uh, good pet to have with dwarf shrimp. These Stiphodon species, the Palawanensis Stiphodon, and then the um, the blue and gold stiphodons. There's also a cobalt stiphodon, a red neon stiphodon. They all have, um, in all, there's about 30, 32 of them. And they all have an island chain that they're kind of uh, affiliated with. Some of them are born in one island chain and then move to another as they mature, like I said. But because of that literally island or archipelago effect, they evolve differently. And so we get very different colors and features. And in the front of these uh, neon gold ones, you actually see uh, that they have their, their uh, pectoral fins have evolved to hold on like a suction cup. They can frame them together. They're very close together and they can scoot themselves up vertical surfaces and other ones do that sometimes with their mouth or with their uh, their back fins but they do this with their front fins by putting them together and it looks like they're flayed out like that um, but that actually closes their their breast uh, closer to the you know the 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 pivotal point on their breast bone 
that uh, makes a little suction area that they stick to right underneath their gills. And because of this, uh, they, they're used to being in fast water or just out of the current. And because of that, they really need a lot of oxygen. So that's why we have the extra air stone. That's why you need the water turnover going so uh, often with this lovely species. And really, you need to have this biofilm for them to be able to graze on all day like you're seeing here. Uh, now, just beautiful little guy hanging out here. Um, if you can't, well, if we can, we'll see him eat for a sec. But I don't want to make this video too much longer. So I'll just say that they live at a temperature somewhere between 72 and 82. Uh, that changes with the rainy season. They like a very low TDS. And they also need, like I said, that oxygenated water. Even more important if you're keeping them at the warm end of the spectrum. You can see they don't want anything to do with the shrimp. And... Uh, They've they've been very nice. I even had baby shrimp in here of a uh, Babalti variety, and they're leaving them alone completely. I've watched them actually sitting on top of these guys. <laughs> you can see, actually, one just swam over right now. Uh, so they're not impressed by one another, and that's fine by me. Uh, now, other gobies, like lipstick gobies and bumblebee gobies, things like that, sometimes... They're more of a gudgeon family, or they're a goby that's closer to the mainland, and those tend to be more carnivorous. These tend to be out in little streams, and because of that, they can't rely on so much food, even insects and things, because windstorms and just the bio load out in the middle of the Pacific on an, o on an island that may only have one or two drainages and maybe only one's present year-round, uh, that's where some of these fish live. They've adapted to an amazingly specific ecosystem, and if you're going to keep them, you need to provide them with the biofilm. So that's why I will cycle out things like I will take where all these shrimp are grazing, this wood, and cycle it out. I will increase the tannin load in this tank uh, from time to time, and it needs a 50% water change a week minimum, if not two of those. So uh, we will see how they do. Uh, I, I don't necessarily ho hope to see them reproducing uh, per se. I know that's not what I want out of it, uh, but I do. I would like to see them doing the spawning behavior to know that they're happy. Obviously, the larval stage babies that they would lay would not survive without the salt water to go into. So, uh, but it would still let me know that they're happy if if I see that. So that's the end goal right now. At some point, I may try to get salt water uh, going up and going. And uh, basically, I just wanted to share you got an update on these guys with you. And uh, if you're going to get your own, there are lots of different species varieties and aquatic arts has carried over i think over a dozen now e easily over 12 gobies and easily over eight true gobies uh which are very hard to find sometimes and they um source them they quarantine them and it's all sustainable and then uh you know i just think that they're a really great resource for all sorts of nano fish and shrimp and uh invertebrates so they did give me these gobies, and I must admit that, um, but I've been wanting to buy these and was prepared to buy these. I ended up buying plecos and the uh, phoenix rasboras and a few other things, and so they sent me the gobies, which I am just endlessly enamored by. So I suggest uh, if you have the ability to set up everything that I'm discussing here, uh, any one of these true stifodon species definitely get yourself some. Get a little group. They're social. They like to act kind of like panda loaches, and they pile on each other at night and kind of play around just for fun. Very clearly, they're not eating or doing anything mating-related even. You'll see the males just kind of all stacked on top of each other in a corner sometimes. And so they're a very social fish, so I recommend you get definitely five or six of them, uh, if not just a pair. Uh, you could kind of go the solo or pair route, or you want to go the social route and, and do it up enough that they can establish a hierarchy, and then you'll get one that colors up very nicely and all that sort of thing. All right, guys, thanks again. Links are below, and you can get that, uh, that discount. Plus, we're doing a big giveaway all through the month of July. 
Um, there is a video, the last video I posted has uh, information on how you can win a $50 gift certificate just by uh, entering some things in the comments. And uh, other than that, we'll be giving away a few hundred more dollars from Aquatic Arts as I feature various species that I have in my care that I've acquired from them over time and they've agreed to uh, pay it back to the, the community that supports them and uh you guys support the channel so all in all it's like the circle of life that we're we're doing here giving back so i will talk to you guys later have a wonderful day swim on and i'll talk to you next time